Have you heard of a spaghetti western? Yeah, like many, I knew what one was, I just had no idea where the name came from. I'm going to explain where the name came from, why they're different from American westerns, and why they are so darn much fun to watch. If you want to live, then shoot! 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 I'm Andrew Heil, and this is a Hollywood History Minute. I'm a voice actor with experience in dubbing foreign language films to English. And despite working behind the scenes for dozens of shows in languages from Spanish to Greek to Armenian and Korean, I had no idea what made a spaghetti western a spaghetti western. Westerns were popular in the United States right about the time of World War II and beyond. They were filmed all over Hollywood and the surrounding area. I'm standing at a Western set in Paramount Ranch. It's a popular park here in the Los Angeles area. This is a site with a huge resume of film and TV shoots. Westerns were also shot in Arizona, New Mexico, the Sierras of California and Nevada, and pretty much every single studio lot here in town. I've got a great video coming on location soon. The popularity of westerns soared worldwide. Italy and Spain became a mecca for western movie filming. It was a category dominated by Italian directors. Over 600 European westerns were made between 1960 and 1978. The majority of these movies were originally released in Italian or with Italian dubbing. But as most of the films featured multilingual casts, the sound was edited in post and most western all'italiana didn't have an official dominant language. According to Wikipedia, the term spaghetti western was coined by a Spanish journalist, Alfonso Sanchez, in reference to the Italian food spaghetti, and spaghetti westerns are also known as Italian westerns, and in Japan, they're known as macaroni westerns. Other accounts credit American audiences with the nickname, but either way, the Italian roots of these films is for sure the reason that they are called spaghetti westerns. These movies were made with the intention of dubbing the films in many languages for distribution worldwide. They were famously very low budget. Many of these films were shot in the deserts of southern Spain with actors from all the regions of Italy, Spain, and other areas of Europe. Because of the low cost of filming and the ability to dub in many languages, they were a boon for the studios who produced them. There was no large loss if a film failed to be a huge success, but there was plenty of money to be made if there was an upside. Many scenes were shot with actors who were not multilingual. A scene with a dialogue could have easily been shot with three actors speaking three different languages at the same time, Italian, Spanish, and English. When you think of spaghetti westerns, it's likely you think of Clint Eastwood, but he was only in a few of the very popular flicks. Eastwood had success in Hollywood with his portrayal of a cowboy on a TV show called Rawhide from 1959 to 1965. And despite his notoriety as a western cowboy, Eastwood was having a tough time getting work in Hollywood outside of a series. With some hesitation, he decided to go to Italy to film Sergio Leone's trilogy of westerns, Fistful of Dollars for a Few Dollars More, and The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. In the film The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, American actors Clint Eastwood, Lee Van Cleef, and Eli Wallach spoke English and were dubbed into Italian for their debut release in Rome. For their American version, the leading English-speaking actor voices were used, but supporting cast members were dubbed into English. The films were so successful that they shot Eastwood into world fame and his career skyrocketed. Director Sergio Leone didn't speak English and Eastwood had to communicate with the Italian cast and crew through a stuntman named Benito Stefanelli, who acted as an uncredited interpreter for the production and he would later appear in Leone's other pictures. So why were and are these spaghetti westerns so popular? These films were gritty, rough, dirty, and sweaty, and audiences saw them as more realistic portrayals and accurate in their portrayal of the Wild West. If you watch a few of these cult classics, you'll be able to see the distinct portrayal of lawless, corrupt criminals out for their own personal gain. Whether it was for gold, money, train robberies, bank heists, or revenge, most had no regard to human life, leaving a trail of corpses everywhere they went. And murder was not innuendo, it was blatantly prevalent in these movies. 
Hollywood westerns were more clean cut and heroes and anti-heroes were clearly defined and often pretty glamorous, clearly identifying good versus evil and good guy versus bad guy. Rides a horse. Music for spaghetti westerns had a flair all of its own. The music of iconic composers like Ennio Marconi set the tone, becoming a defining element of spaghetti westerns with unforgettable melodies. Some other great soundtracks worth listening to are Grand Duello II, composed by Louis Barkalov, and also music by Gianni Ferrio. I'll post a few links and a couple of great resources to find some of this music. And I'll post a couple soundtracks from Spotify. While Eastwood and Leone are among the most recognizable in this genre, if you're a fan, it would be well worth checking out director Sergio Carbucci and his film The Mercenary and The Great Silence. You can easily search Spaghetti Westerns on YouTube or Google and you'll get a ton of things to watch. I discovered that many of these are available for free for streaming and I'll post a couple of those links as well. With over 600 Westerns made in the Western Alitalia style, there's a good chance that you'll get hooked on adding them to your watch list. Now, I would love to hear what your favorite Western is, spaghetti or otherwise. Have a suggestion about a Hollywood story or topic you wanna to know more about? Please post a comment. I hope you like, share, subscribe, and until next time, I'm Andrew Heil, and this is a Hollywood History Minute.